Greetings everyone, Unsafe Kibble here with another Zelda game. Uh, this is Oracle of Ages, it's one of the PlayStation games. So uh, I'm playing it on an emulator for recording. So uh, Pumpkinhead here is the first boss. Um, really not a difficult boss, you're just going to uh, knock him down and then pick up his head, throw it away, and then uh, destroy the spirit as it tries to fly to the head. Uh, I decided to do a stupid thing. Uh, with this game. Uh, this is going to be three hearts for a first playthrough. Um, I did the first couple of bosses without taking damage, so I decided that uh, it was going to be a damageless run. And I didn't upgrade my sword. So throughout the thing I'm going to be doing two damage. And we'll discuss that more later. Uh, the two damage on the sword didn't uh, become much of a problem. This boss right here, uh, multi-phase? I don't know what you call it. Um, you want to throw the bomb uh, in the red face. It took me a while to figure out the pattern, uh, but essentially you want to jump up to the left as you enter and throw a bomb, uh, get the red face. You then want to uh, hop off and then hop on the end uh, rotating platform, whether that be the front platform or the back platform, doesn't matter, and then drop a bomb on its head as a uh, you cross over and that will guarantee that the bomb falls in on the red face and that eliminates basically all of the flying projectiles that could be happening uh, in this room. Third boss. Uh, this third boss is shadows on the floor. Uh, this is the first boss that took uh, more time than just a few seconds to destroy. Basically you run away from the shadows. He's going to uh, coalesce together you smack the butterflies that are coming out of him. This is going to cause him to spawn behind you. Uh, if you turn around and look at him, uh, you he runs away. So you can't only use the sword. You have to use the seed shooter off the wall. But the nice thing is once you shoot him, you can immediately turn around and he will start spawning butterflies on the floor right behind him. So that's basically how you uh, beat this boss. Oh my gosh, this boss. Uh, eye socket. Now, uh, this is going to look really, really easy. Um, it was not in any way uh, easy. Basically, you shoot your uh, hook shot, and it stuns him, and you switch places with him, and you have to hit him with the sword, all the while these four uh, mobs are flying around. I will talk about that guy here in a second. Uh, but the eye socket was insane. Uh, it took more attempts than anything but the final bosses. Uh, the rage uh, was intense. So, uh, that being said, uh, he dies rather quickly and we move on to the next boss. Okay, so uh, I haven't been talking about this boss, uh, but he splits into parts and the basic idea is you use this cane that you've uh, obtained which allows you to put blocks to get them to collide together um, all while dodging projectiles in the room that they are throwing at you um, took a couple of attempts but not really uh, a difficult boss um, pretty easy to finish this one off um, not much more to it than that
Okay, and with that, we're into final phase now. He's going to move about the room, and he's going to spit lightning a lot faster than he had before. Um, same principle as before, dodge and, and smack him. Uh, the blocks can sometimes make that difficult to do in the room to move, but uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so after the three minutes of absolutely projectiles flying everywhere, uh, we get this underwater squid boss, which was uh, a nice refresher. Uh, it's got two distinct phases. Phase one, uh, you're going to smack it while it's up above the water. Uh, phase two, you're going to use the seed shooter to smack it while it's under the water. Uh, there's not much complexity here. He's going to give chase, so you're going to bounce the seed shooter off the wall as the most effective method. Um, swimming became slightly more difficult once I got this mermaid costume because you can't just press a direction, you actually have to tap the direction to make yourself move. Um, when you are above water, uh, the most effective means that I found was to use the spinning sword slash and then smack, uh, although you don't have to do that. You'll see me on multiple occasions just swinging the sword. Uh, fight was made more difficult at this point since I didn't have the upgraded sword because the upgraded sword breaks pots and if I wanted those pots on the upper level out of the way I had to put on the power bracelet and uh, pick them up and that just was more complicated than it was worth but uh, not too terribly difficult to move around them. All right, so here we go, the final boss, right? Uh, we're about to save uh, our, our glorious uh, girl that we've been trying to save, who isn't Zelda. Uh, basically, you want to shoot with a mystery seed, and then you want to use the hook shot to pull the spirit out of the body, and then you want to uh, hit with the sword. You can do it once, um, and then you, the, the, she's going to relocate, and you're going to repeat the process. Uh, I was thinking that the boss was uh, really short um, for a final boss, but it turns out actually not the final boss. Uh, if you let her uh, throw spears around the room, it gets really difficult. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, uh, the emulator was doing at this point. You'll see that her shadow completely vanishes at times. Uh, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a shadow on the floor. but. With that, uh, she dies after three hits from an unupgraded sword. Uh, I've seen people fight it with a fully upgraded sword, and it uh, this one seems to make no difference. It's three times. Okay, so after the... Uh, Fish boss, two bosses prior, and after the uh, saving uh, Nehru, or Nehru, in the last one, uh, this one was uh, fairly simple. Basic idea, you want to swim, get it to throw a projectile, you then want to switch with it and have its projectile hit it. Uh, from what I could tell, the sword uh, does no damage to it and shocks you when it happens. Uh, you have to do the hook shot because it causes it to change colors and if it hits a, a sphere of the same color it doesn't do any damage so it doesn't help you out. Uh, it could also do that shock thing and if you uh, hook shot it while the shock thing's going off you're going to get hurt. So pretty simple though. Oh boy, wasn't this guy fun. Okay, so this rock face dude, the penultimate boss, uh, phase one, uh, pretty simple. You've been doing a lot of games where you practice smacking projectiles uh, back in directions, so you should be ready for this. He's going to throw his fist, and you smack it back into his face. He then moves into phase two. Phase two uh, is these rock pinchers. You're supposed to throw a bomb in between them, and when he smacks it with his uh, rock hammer, he causes himself damage. Uh, throwing bombs, I found really hard to do uh, in directions, so this, take, this phase takes me the longest. 
Um, after this, he's going to move to phase three, where he's going to put up shields that block any frontal assault. So uh, you've got to get out the seed shooter, and you've got to bounce it off the wall behind him. Uh, I, again, have a little bit of trouble doing this with my aim, but uh, I do manage to get that kill. Um, you've been practicing seed shooting a lot on previous bosses, so again, that shouldn't be uh, too much of an ask, too many attempts. Uh, the final phase is going to be uh, I, ball and chain, for lack of a better word. Uh, you're, what you're supposed to do is wait for him to fire uh, one of the ball and chains and then go up and grab the other and use that, pull that ball back with the power bracelet and use uh, the ball to damage him. Uh, there's been no training uh, on uh, or practice on doing that to this point, so uh, it's a slightly uh, out of practice thing. Uh, I also uh, said power bracelet. By this time, you've got the upgraded power glove. Uh, you can't move them with just the power bracelet, so uh, it's not possible to do that with no upgrade. Uh, but once you smack him with the uh, ball and chain three times, he dies, and that is the end. Alright, and with that you reach the final boss. So after we knocked our spirit out of the uh, priestess earlier, uh, it went into the princess. So same fight as before. Uh, shoot with a mystery seed, hook shot, and smack. It's going to take three of these again. Um, once you do three, it's going to leave that. And the final boss is dead. bamboozled the final boss is not dead uh, you've got to come back and do more fighting uh, so you come back uh, and you have four dark links spawned in the room uh, the uh, strategy guides that I could find online said to leave the links in the room uh, and use their hearts to heal but I didn't want to heal uh, so uh, I, I eliminate them I tried leaving them alive in the room uh, but this boss gets faster uh, once you start doing more damage, so that made them being in the room just impossible. So the basic idea of what I did was I wanted to load up a sword spin, and then as she flies across the room, I wanted to uh, hit her with it. Um, in the first phase, she does th three real attacks. Uh, the first one is she is going to throw these blue balls at you. Uh, she'll do three of them, she can do two of them, she can do one, stop in the middle, and then shoot up to three at you again. So uh, lots of blue orbs can be flying at you. The second attack that she can do is she can run into you and cause you damage. And the third thing she's going to do is she's going to do the orange uh, explosion with uh, bombs circling out, which uh, is the other attack that uh, occurs. Um, I had to come back and do this, hence why the uh, boxing is off on the recording software. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, eventually she gets absolutely faster. As you can see here, she's really dashing across the room now. Uh, after that, she's going to pick up a, a fourth attack, which is this large orb projectile, which actually hones in on you and will chase you around the room unless you can lure it to kind of float off screen. Uh, but once you do that uh, and you kill her uh, true form, as she calls it, there's that other attack I was talking about, uh, that is uh, the final boss down and uh, GG, right? 
Absolutely freaking not. Uh, we've got another form to this final boss. So we've killed the final boss once early in the game, new possession. We've killed the final boss on second possession. We've killed final boss true form. And now we've got final boss true face. Uh, true face has three phases. The turtle phase you saw there, um, you run out of the way. Um, I'm accelerating the pause menu because I, I just got tired of looking at the pause. Um, uh, but you, uh, turtle phase, you're going to lure the, uh, lure it to drop. When it shows its face, you turn around and smack it. Um, when it goes to spider phase, you need to have your bombs out. You have to hit it with a bomb in order to make it show its true face beneath the spider. Um, and then you can uh, cause damage. And when it goes to its third phase, you just start praying and crying. Uh, the third phase is a B phase, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, turtle phase, I found you could only get one set of punishes in on turtle phase, uh, because after it's shown its turtle phase once, it will uh, switch. Uh, once you get it to spider phase, you can punish it multiple times. Uh, B phase, which we'll talk about now, you can again punish as much as you want, but it is a very erratic phase. Um, it is more complex to avoid than every other uh, phase. Uh, spider, you want to lure the spit. B phase, yay! Okay, he's gonna spin around the room in a uh, figure eight pattern, or she is. So you want to smack her uh, with the spinning sword. You have to be careful because you don't know if she's going to do multiple figure eights or if she's going to break that uh, and leave the screen. When she leaves the screen, she will come back with icicle projectiles, which you saw, and she will uh, at random do that move where she spawns the three bees and moves to a different corner of the room. Uh, I got really lucky right there because she phase transitioned. If she hadn't been phase transitioning, uh, I would have died. Um, but again, turtle, we're going to smack it till it uh, stops once, and then uh, it's going to turtle some more, but eventually it will phase transition. The order is completely random, so you could get uh, any combination or no combination of the B. Uh, this was the fight where I felt not having the upgraded damage was the most intense. Uh, the uh, so base sword here, the wooden sword, does two damage. You can upgrade to the normal sword, which does three damage. If you link your game, you can get the big Goron sword, which does four damage, and then obtain the master sword, which does five damage. Furthermore, uh, this is also no rings. Uh, there is a ring which doubles your damage. So at your highest, you could be doing 10 damage per hit here, and I'm doing two. Uh, so it really was uh, quite the difficult challenge, but there it is, and that's the game on Oracle of Seasons now.